Greetings, and welcome to the digital service of the United Methodist Church of Estes Park. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. In addition to this pre-recorded service, we are also participating in live Zoom worship each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Mountain Time. If you'd like to join us for that service, please email me at pastor at epumc.org and I'll send you the link. We are here in the midst now of the first Sunday of Advent. We will be sharing in an Advent book study of Reverend Adam Hamilton's new book, Incarnation. Join us on Zoom on Wednesdays beginning December 2nd at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. We will be sending out the link for the uh, book study. Please feel free to share it with your friends, neighbors, family members. They are all welcome to join us. If you are worshiping with us and would like to be part of our congregation, please send me an email. We'd love to connect you with the ministries of our church and welcome you to our faith community. Today is the kickoff of our stewardship campaign. Our theme this year is, it's a new day at Estes Park United Methodist Church. Just last week, your administrative council approved a new budget, which we will be underwriting in the next few weeks. The week of December 13th, you will be asked to turn in an estimate of giving card so that we can properly plan for this coming year. I've asked Mike Elgin to talk to us this morning for a few minutes via video about why it is that he believes it's a new day at Estes Park United Methodist Church. Hi, I'm Mike Elgin, and I believe it's a new day at Estes Park United Methodist Church. 2020 has been a wild ride with a global pandemic, a wildfire that threatened our community, a contentious election, and many other struggles. Despite these challenges, our church has hung together and even flourished. We have a new pastor who brings a lot of energy, enthusiasm, and a new perspective. Our digital worship, blessing of the animals, and book study have attracted new folks from outside of our congregation. And just think, a year ago, most of us thought Zoom was a word used to describe something that went very fast or even a large camera lens. Now we see Zoom as another tool to help us all stay connected and even worship and enjoy fellowship together. Nancy and I are encouraged by the news of a vaccine. We're anxious to see things get back to normal, and we're really excited about the future of our church. Yes, it is a new day at Estes Park UMC. Thank you, Mike. And now let us worship the Lord together. Today we light the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. We remember the hopeful longing of people waiting for a savior. And we acknowledge our own hope that we too might be filled with the light of Christ. May the light of hope burn brightly in our hearts all our days. Let us pray. Redeemer God, you are the one who gives us hope. As we wait, we know that you will bring justice and peace. As we wait, we find you have made your wisdom known in our lives. Come Redeemer, come. Amen. Christ brings the joy of God's presence in our midst. We sing praises to God for the salvation Christ brings to us. Because of Christ, the weak are strengthened, the fearful are encouraged, 
and the unrighteous are redeemed. Joy and gladness are ours, because God has come to us in Christ to walk with us in the paths of righteousness. As we begin our journey to Bethlehem, may our celebrations renew our faith and fill us with joy and thanks. Please join in the opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we await your coming. We wait filled with hope, knowing your light will shine in the darkness. We wait anticipating your peace, believing that one day it will fill our world. We wait embracing your love. May we reach out to share it with our neighbors. We wait with joy in the expectation of your birth. Lord, we wait. Come soon and fill us with your love. Amen. presence of the transcendent and holy God. Let us humbly confess our neediness and ask for grace and mercy. Let us pray. We do confess to you, O God, that we have fallen asleep. We often go through the motions and live our daily lives without much thought outside of ourselves. Forgive us for our short-sightedness. Forgive us for not being away to the wonders and signs that you are doing something Holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. As we wait for Christmas, we know that Christ has already come into our world and lives and has already been born in us. We are renewed and restored. Go and share the good news, God's love and restoration. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is the point in our service where we would take up our morning offering if we were meeting in person. Hear these words. We are the work of God's hands, the psalmist says, and God continues to shape us each day into a people of goodness and peace. That is why we bring our gifts to God, to be part of creating a more beautiful world through the ministry of this church and the witness of our lives each day. Let us gather our gifts together and present them as an offering to God. Let us pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you for all that we have received. And now as we return a portion of that, along with the gifts of our time and our talent to you, we pray that you would bless and multiply these gifts for the furtherance of your kingdom. Amen. Let us pray together. Our prayer response um, today is that I will say, come Lord, and you will respond, come among us and make us whole. Again, I will say, come Lord, and your response is, come among us and make us whole. Let us pray. Into our troubles and weaknesses, into the barren places of our souls, Come, Lord, come, come among us, us and, and make us whole. Into war-torn areas and into the lives of refugees, into those who live in conflict, come, Lord, come, come among us, us and make us whole. Into those experiencing homelessness and those who feel abandoned, 
Come, Lord, come among us and make us whole. Into the sick and the injured, into those with COVID and with cancer, come, Lord, come among us and make us whole. Into the poor and starving, into those who are oppressed or abused, come, Lord, come among us and make us whole. Into the lives of our loved ones, into those whom we, from whom we are estranged, come, Lord, come among us and make us whole. Into our joys and celebrations, into our everyday lives and our achievements, come, Lord, come among us and make us whole. O oh Christ, we long for your coming. We pray for the day when your kingdom will come in all its glory and suffering and pain and sickness, oppression and death will be no more. We pray for the day when we will be resurrected and live in peace, harmony, joy, and love together in your kingdom. And we pray all of this in the name of your son who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture is Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates, Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. <clears throat> In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God, as we have now heard your word read and will now hear it proclaimed, help each of us to hear the message you intend for us this day. Amen. For the last 29 years, I have sat in church pews on the first Sunday of Advent. And I must admit to you that I have laughed to myself as I have listened to preachers struggle with the apocalyptic texts of the first Sunday of Advent. I'm not laughing this year, since I'm the one up here struggling. Today's text takes us to the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And Matthew is only 16 chapters long to begin with, so we are pushed quickly toward the end of Matthew. One commentator I read this week wrote, sometimes I wish that Mark chapter 13 came with a cover bearing a large type friendly admonition, don't panic. Mark 13 is 
is, is, is a difficult chapter. And when reading this chapter without understanding its literary genre, it can be some really scary stuff. This chapter is part, is a type of literature that is known as apocalyptic. It involves, this type of literature involves descript, descriptions of the end of the world and typically depicts grandiose and cataclysmic events. This type of writing developed in the post-exile Jewish culture and was very popular among the early Christians. The, words we, the word we transliterate from apocalypse from the Greek actually has the meaning of revelation. Apocalyptic literature comes in times of oppression. For oppressed people, a prophecy of the end of the world offers relief from their persecution and hope for them that their suffering is going to come to an end. For example, the book of Daniel, which is apocalyptic literature, was written to encourage the Jews in their revolt against the Greek. Revelation was written to encourage early Christians in their conflicts with the Romans. And as I worked on this week on how to describe what apocalyptic literature is, I think I boiled it down better to say what it isn't. Apocalyptic literature is not meant to be taken literally. And it is not intended to be a prediction of what will happen in future generations. So how does this fit into the first Sunday of Advent? And I think that's a really good question. I find that it is a bit confusing to start Advent with an adult Jesus. Yet here we are. It's strange, isn't it, to begin our anticipation of the birth of Jesus by being encouraged to wait for his coming again. After all, talking about Jesus' return seems to be out of sequence in the context of the liturgical year because Jesus hasn't even been born yet. And besides that, for heaven's sake, it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. Why are we talking about the sun being darkened, the moon being extinguished, and the stars falling from the sky? Well, I believe that this is our first text for this first Sunday of Advent, because what sounds like a disaster actually prepares the way for the Son of God. And that's what Advent is all about. Having an apocalyptic text at the beginning of Advent actually does make sense because it places us with those who were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And just like those who waited for the first coming, those of us who now wait for his return, we don't know when he will appear either. And while we do not know the day or the hour, the good news is that we know that God is faithful. And Jesus' resurrection from the dead is a sign to us in our community that Jesus is coming. And God's kingdom is being revealed and finding fulfillment. Maybe, just maybe, this isn't a text about threats. Maybe it's about promises. Maybe it's about hope. Remember, this is what apocalyptic literature is about. It's about bringing encouragement and hope to people who are suffering. And isn't 2020 the year we need encouragement and hope more than ever before? I don't need to explain to you how rough of a year this has been. We have all lived it. But here is the good news that I have to share with you today. And that is that that which looks like devastation and defeat will be God's victory. 
out of the fear, anger, and pain of this year, there will be a new presence of God. Out of this horrible virus, out of the elections that brought out the worst on both sides, out of the fear and trauma we experienced with the wildfires, there will be a new presence of God. Because out of the suffering and death of the Messiah will be new life. God's new way of being in the world is able to turn a cross into the resurrection and to turn a baby in a manger into salvation for our world. Yes, this Advent season looks very different than any we have experienced before. Yet the message is still the same. Mark's gospel was clearly written for those who were facing imminent persecution. We are not facing that, but we are facing our own difficulties. The late Niles Dahl, professor of theology at Yale, wrote that maybe the message of Mark for us today is as a church that has tasted success and found it satisfying. That maybe we are believers who have taken the gospel for granted. And that the purpose of this text is to shock us into awareness. When Agnes and I lived in Colorado Springs, our home was very near the airport and two Air Force bases. We were, in fact, so close to one of the bases that we could hear taps played every night at 10 p.m. At first, when we moved there, the sounds of the planes passing so low overhead was jarring and more than just a bit unsettling. However, before we knew it, we became used to those sounds and didn't really even hear them any longer. I remember our first night here in Estes Park when we moved here July 1st. I remember waking up that morning and saying to Agnes, I don't think I can live here. To which she responded, why? And I said, it's so quiet. There's no airplanes going overhead. I wonder if after years in the church, we get so used to the sounds of Advent, to the coming of Christ, that we no longer really fully experience it. Or if we do still notice, it has ceased to jolt us awake as God intended it to do. It is clear in the scripture that Jesus does not intend for us to predict when he will return. Rather, he is urging us to live as if his return were just around the corner. We are called to live into a very complex paradox. The paradox of already, not yet. And that's a quality of our faith, the already, not yet. Jesus has already been born into this world, but he has not yet returned as promised. Jesus has already established the way through which we are brought into relationship with God, but we do not yet live in complete communion with God. The kingdom of God is already evident, but that kingdom is not yet fully established. Until then, we live in the meantime, which can be a challenging time in which to live. By keeping awake and alert, by living our lives in keeping with Jesus, who has already come, not only will we be prepared to live in the promised kingdom of God when it arrives, but we may experience even now, even today, 
some about what life in the kingdom may be like here on earth. In this Advent season, we are called to watch and wait. And as we wait in the midst of the difficulties of our day, we cry out, where are you, God? When are you coming? And Jesus' reply is the same to us today as it was in Mark's day. Jesus says to us, I will come again. Don't get lost in the details, my friends. Concentrate instead on being ready. When Jesus returns, may we be a people who are awake and ready. Amen. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for this Advent season, and, and we confess that we are not good at waiting. We pray, God, that you would keep us awake and alert as we wait. We await your son's return. We await the glory to, gloriousness of living fully in his kingdom, in your kingdom. God, be with us in this time of Advent. Help this to be more than a time of a countdown to Christmas, but to, for it to be a time of reflection and personal and faith growth in each of us. Amen. forth now into this new week. May the grace of God be with us that as we wait and we watch, we may find ways to serve God in God's kingdom until Christ comes again. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.